What's happening, people? Scotty G here from Newcastle upon Tyne. How's everybody doing? Beautiful day again. Once a day, once again here in Newcastle upon Tyne, because we don't get the best of weather up here. You know, it's always fucking windy. But uh, when it's not windy, it's not too bad. That's one thing I like about London. You know, uh, there's just fucking hardly no wind because obviously in the centre of the city. Anyway, enough about that. Um, he's, he's requested prison stories, so I'm here to oblige and I'm going to give you some some more prison stories of my time in Durham and Ackerton. Right, where do I start? Right, uh, well, um, there was an incident. This involves uh, a bit of uh, screw uh, corruption once again. Um... Aye, there was. A, I think I mentioned in one of my last videos there was a, a screw called Shiny Shoes, and obviously, you know, so it does what it says on the tin. You know why we call them that? Shoes were like fucking mirrors, and he was a prick. Do you know what I mean? I mean, you know, he he was a fucking prick, and uh, this young lad, he, you know, he was well, saying young lad. I was only I was only twenty two at the time myself, but. He was, I think he was 21, just turned 21, and he was full of hell, you know, and um, the screw was giving him shit, and he just fucking bang, I won the landing on the twos on D-Wing in Durham, and he just bang, banged him clean out, and then close the bells went off, and then fucking hell, all hell is let loose, all the fucking, well, you, as, as people know, being in there, once our bell goes off, every fucking screw comes from everywhere. And the kid was fucking booted a fuck on the floor. Fucking twisted up, you know, and then just fucking carried down to the fucking block, you know. And then uh, obviously we all got banged up because that's what happens. You all get banged up straight away after an incident. And... Uh, there was one screw, um, a younger screw, who was like a bit, a bit more soft, you know. In like, uh, used to keep out the way when fights used to go on, you know. Um, and like, <laughs> like when association would finish, he would like, he would, he uh, would go, he would go in the, he would, he would say dead softly, right, old lads, how we bang up. You know, dead, dead, dead quietly. You know, but but you know it's, but um, he he didn't have anything to do with the kicking, but the two old school screws did. One was a big fucker, uh, big six foot four. Another one was an old an old time screw. You know, and um. We, we, me, when we got banged up, uh, me and more kid were looking out the window, and we seen uh, the two screws, the three screws, um, walking back, and you could see them uh, confiding with each other, getting their story straight. You know, because obviously they'd have to give an account of what happened. You know, because the kid would have had fucking marks and obviously bruised. He would have been fucking bruised to fuck. We never seen him again after that, like. But um, they obviously kicked it. They kicked him to fuck, do you know? They kicked him to fuck on the wing, you know. And um, that's what I'm saying, you know. You kind of beat the system, do you know what I'm saying? So... But uh, all we could see them, you know, I mean, um, and, and, and it was obvious that they had booted him to fuck down there because when, he walked, when, um, one of the, when they were walking back, one of the screws, you seen him putting his tie straight and all that and putting all his pens back in his fucking bare shirt pocket, getting his cell together, you know, and they were confiding in each other, getting their story straight, you could tell, you know. So that was just, that was on D-Wing in Durham, that, I think about 2006, 2007. <laughs> uh, and uh, 
What else? Oh, um, let's have a think now. Ah, well, this one, this one's from Ackleton. Uh, maybe it's 07, 08. Um, there was a lifer in there, and we used to call him Kill Bill. And he was a, he was a cockney, he was a London fella. But he was like sixty four year old, and he had been in he had been in I think twenty five year, twenty six year or something like that, and uh, he was in a murder obviously you know, and he had claimed that he um, the guy he killed had um, raped his disabled wife, and he fucking. He killed him with he killed him with his bare hands. That's what he said. That's what he said, you know. But I mean it was obviously that long ago. I never I never really looked into it, but uh, that's what we used to call him, Kill Bill, you know. He had he had long grey hair with a ponytail and glasses on and he was from Kent. He never got any visits, you know, I mean he was sixty odd year old, you know, a lot of his family he didn't have any family or anything and and if it happens um he got released. He actually got his parole while we're in there, you know. And uh, you could just imagine what it must have been like, you know. I mean, he'd never seen that outside, you know, since like the eighties, the early eighties, you know. And like the eighties, and <sighs> how much? I mean, I, me even being in there for four years when I come out. The changes I noticed was unbelievable. So I couldn't even begin to imagine what it must have been like for him coming out. And I mean, they stuck him in a hostel, we heard, um, not far from Ackleton Prison. So in Northumberland, you know, where he knew no fucker. I don't know what's happened to him now, but... Um, but... Um, you know, fucking, like, we heard, sto like, you know, we heard stories that, like, obviously, you know, like, obviously being institutionalised, you know, he was, uh, he was still sticking posters up on his, on his walls with toothpaste, you know, and things like that, you know, being that used to prison life, you know, there's a lot of them don't want to get out, you know, there was a, a well, there was a bloke in uh, in Durham. Um, he killed a tramp when he was seventeen, <laughs> and um, he got life. And uh, he was fifty five, and he was still in there. He'd been in there fucking thirty, I think nearly forty. Yeah. No, I, 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 he was fifty five, so he'd been in there like thirty eight, nearly forty. Yeah. And he could have got his parole, but he just he didn't want to get out, you know. And you know what he had? He, he I was talking to another another uh, well known character from Newcastle, a bit of a face from Newcastle. I'll mention his name on camera. But um, we were standing, and he uh, the life I come up to with, who um, who done the uh, forty year. And he and he says, "Oh, I've still got me uh, me pair of shoes I first come in with, and they were like obviously fucking forty year old, fucking dropping the fucking bitch, you know. But fucking, you know, you would like if his parole was coming up, you would just batter a screw, or you know, like he was coming off fucking just blatantly coming off visits with fucking nine bars of fucking." tack fucking in his top pocket, you know, just to fuck his parole up, basically. And it's sad, you know, but some people, some people get that institutionalised. They're happy, they're happier, they're happier in there, you know. Some people are actually happier in there, you know. They get three square meals a day. You know, they don't have to think for themselves, you know. Everything's laid on, you know, you tell when to eat. You know, you tell when to get up. You know, so some for some people, it's 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 a it's a you know it's a blessing for some people. Some people actually like it, 
sad as that is, you know, but uh, I'm not one of them. Obviously, I'm not one of them people, do you know what I mean? But uh, another story uh, involves my brother, actually. And uh, before we went to prison, he was going out with this lass. And uh, she was she, she had a lad, but the lad only wanted her because she was going up visiting him and taking him stuff in. You know, that's all he wanted her for. He wasn't interested in her. He wasn't interested in her for nothing else. That's all he wanted her for. So what well, my kid fucking end up getting with her. And he said, look at tell the kid, tell the lad that you didn't want to be with him anymore. So it's fucking it's he, he knows the crack. And uh and that's that, you know. So whether she did or not, I don't know. But apparently she did. But obviously he was pissed off because the visit stopped. You know? So obviously he wasn't going to be happy with my brother, was he? So when I landed in Ackleton, I landed in Ackleton first. And uh, he was there, you know? And uh, the evil eyes were coming across, you know, when we met each other on the yard. Nothing was uh, nothing was said between me. He knew, I knew who he was and he knew who I was, but nothing was said between me and him. You know, he had no beef with me, uh, even though it was me, it was my brother, it was my brother he had the beef with. And then when my brother turned up at Arklinton, um what had happened was they'd done a big, massive bust um, a few days earlier and fucking, um, oh, they busted about fucking 15 people. And uh, this kid was one of them. And they ghosted them to the home house. <laughs> and... Uh, When the buses arrived from Durham, my kid was on it, coming to Ackleton, and the lad who he had the beef with was going out on the same bus, so they actually passed each other, you know? So, he's obviously that lad's clocked him, you know? And uh, when they've got a home house, He's got on the fucking phone, the mobile phone, and he still had fucking one couple of his pals in Ackleton, you know. And uh War Kid was on I was on G Wing by that time. And uh, D Wing was the induction wing at that time. I don't know if it still is now, like. But um so in any way this uh this lad who was still in Ackleton has um, approached some Geordies to uh, try and get War Kids slashed. None of the Geordies would do it. So then he went to some of the Mackhams, some of the Sunderland lads. None of, them, none of the Sunderland lads would do it. So he went to the Borough Kids. And there was a lot of Borough Kids in at that time. More Borough Kids than any, than, than, than any other Sunderland lads. Or any other Geordies. And there was a lot of Borough kids in at that time, you know. And they didn't know War Kid. You know, they didn't have a fucking clue who he was. So it was just business to them. And he's paid them. And um, apparently, well, this is this is the way War Kid told us what happened. Uh, he was sitting in his uh, damper in, um, in Ackerton on D-Wing. And uh, three kids have burst in, ballied up. Uh, with night, with with uh, with chips and night knives, you know. And uh, come for war kid. Uh, they've got him down here. Bounce. Um, he managed to batter one of them. He fell against the toilet. And then uh, another one's tried to get him doing here. Um, War could hide him off, and then um, I think they've, they've got him again a little bit here, 
but they were just minor ones there but the main one was doing there and then uh then they've just fucking bump scurried off you know and fled so obviously when someone gets slashed like that um they go straight down to the block and then they get shipped out that's normal procedure but what kid demanded